Around 2004, when I was about 16 years old, I was browsing a second-hand bookstore in St. Louis, aptly named Subterranean Books. I came across an exhibition catalog from an Asian Art Museum exhibition in 1998 called At Home and Abroad, 20 Contemporary Filipino Artists. It was a landmark exhibition in that it was shown in three cities, San Francisco, Houston, and Manila, and included artists such as Gordy Rodriguez, Stephanie Sanuko, Paul Pfeiffer, and Lani Maestro. It was the first time I had ever come into contact with the work of Filipino and Filipino-American artists. These artists were addressing many of the same questions that we still are today. How we place the work of Filipino artists between Asian and American contexts. The struggle to overcome invisibility within the broader contemporary art world. And the search for a national and artistic identity. However, to this day, I have never met another Filipino-American artist in St. Louis. How did the catalog get there in the first place? I always wonder how this out of print publication from 1998 made its way from San Francisco to St. Louis, ended up in an obscure bookstore, and that I was able to find it six years later in 2004 as a teenager who knew nothing about Filipino art. Nonetheless, I purchased the catalog, and it's a book that I've held on to until this day. The cover sun bleached and the pages dog eared from years of flipping through it. The pages had already been marked and passages underlined from a previous reader. Who had it belonged to before me? I think that on the occasion of the Philippine X American Library exhibit of books written by Filipino authors, it speaks to the ability of books to reach, influence, and connect people across the vastness of time and physical distance that often seems so difficult to bridge in the diaspora. Books allow us to be in conversation with the generations before us, as well as those in the future, our past selves and our future selves, what our community has been and what it can be. So I began my project Filipino American Artist Directory in 2015, shortly after completing graduate school. In grad school, I also came in contact with the work of the Filipino scholar Sarita C, who wrote the book The Decolonized Eye, Filipino American Art and Performance, and more recently, The Filipino Primitive, Accumulation and Resistance in the American Museum. Sarita's work helped me to see that the Midwest, and St. Louis in particular, was not disconnected from the narrative of Filipino history, but another entry point into investigating the complex but largely invisible structure that is Filipino in America. And just to note, all these books are also in the Philippine X American Library, so definitely check them out. In the Decolonized Eye, she writes, America's heartland is riven by its transoceanic empire. In most interior states can be mapped, it seems, by the Philippines. And indeed, when I tested that hypothesis for myself, I learned that the very site where I was born and live today, the place that my mother pointed to on the map, is the site of the Philippine village at the 1904 World's Fair. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the history, the Philippine village was 40 acres of land in central St. Louis, where 1,200 indigenous Filipinos were imported and put on display when the U.S. had recently acquired the Philippines as a colony. I think it's important to remember that every city has a history of Filipino presence, whether it's visible or not. So in my personal artistic practice, um, I create site-specific installations and performances that have a connection to the histories of the spaces in which I work and present them. In addition, as a photo-based artist, I'm interested in documentation and making the things we normally overlook more visible. Um, so this is a photograph um, from a series I did in 2011 called Learning Out of Space. So 
open up where the artist directory begins from that site, where 1,200 Filipinos were put on display, but aims to disrupt the colonial narrative by demonstrating our agency as Filipino Americans, that we are actively exhibiting our work as creative producers and telling our own stories. It aims to make the contributions of Filipino American artists more visible through an online archive and annual publication, which is distributed among our artist community as well as with students, teachers, curators, collectors, and arts professionals. I also wanted to create a resource that was open and flexible enough to incorporate the multiplicity of experiences that we have as Filipino Americans. The artists in the project are first generation, second generation, and even third generation artists that were born in the Philippines and immigrated to the United States, or were born in the United States and have always lived here. They range from emerging to mid-career to professional and established artists and maybe some talk or academically trained. There is no one single narrative in the Filipino American experience, which is why I think it's important to each tell our own story, and the directory can be a point of departure for those individual stories to be told. So the project currently lists over 80 visual artists who live on the West Coast, uh, the East Coast, uh, the Gulf Coast, the Midwest, Hawaii, the Philippines, and everywhere in between. Um, because it can often be difficult to find Filipino American artists in museums and in books, that may initially lead us to think that there aren't any Filipino American artists out there. But after three years of seeking out the Filipino American artist community through this project, I realized that it is, in fact, tremendous. And these 80 artists only represent the tip of the iceberg. I see Filipino America as being a constellation of places, physical, virtual, and imagined, that spans the United States and the Philippines. By linking these places together, I imagine us having a strong, interconnected, intergenerational, and multi-centered artist community wherever we find ourselves.